Welcome back to Culinary Classroom. I'm Chef Carrie Leonard. We're here at Johnson Wales University and we're in the Culinary French Lab. Today we're talking about knife skills. Knife skills are tremendously important to classical French cuisine. It's all about the shape and the size and the precision of the knife skills. Very, very important. So we're going to work with that today. I have several shapes here that we're going to work with. And these are great handy little things that show you like a 3D representation of what the size is. You know, sometimes recipes say large dice or medium dice or small dice. It's like, what's the difference between those sizes? There's a real difference if you're looking at actual classic cuisine. So these are available at various places. You can always find great pictures in different cookbooks about those sizes. So we're going to start with our cutting board first. We have a good sturdy cutting board. I like to have lots of cutting boards, so when I use it, I can get rid of it, put it in the dishwasher and grab another one. And I always keep it on a nice wet cloth. That keeps it from rolling around. So now I'm ready to look at my knives. This is a French knife, also called a chef's knife. This has a blade that's much deeper than the handle is because your fingers are going to go up underneath here, and that allows you a good cutting surface here. Now, what we're going to be able to do is cut this julienne. Now, this is a julienne. You saw this on the board. Uh, exact, long, skinny pieces. The way we achieve that, I've got a piece of celery here, is I cut off the end pieces that I don't want to use, and I'm going to put them in my trash bowl. You always keep a trash bowl handy. I'm going to get it to the length that I want for my julienne. In order to make my julienne cut, I need to uh, use the claw method. So let me show you what that looks like first. My fingers are like a claw down on the board and my thumb is back behind. The balance or pivot point that I'm going to be using is going to be the front of this knuckle. If you see that, this is how I'm going to be able to bring my knife back. Keep these fingers out of the way. This is called the claw. So let me bring this in and I am going to make some nice thin slices, which is also called julienne. And I would cut these one more time because these are not a regular shape. And again, I'm using my claw method to keep control over my product and keeping my fingertips out of the way. All right, so that's julienne. We're going to use another method and we're going to use the potato for this one. This is the tunnel method. I'm going to put my fingers on either side of the product and I'm going to bring the knife in so that I, I don't lose this round product right here, okay? So I can make my first cut on my round product. Now he can go on his flat side right here, and I'm ready to go in here again. I'm going to cut this down until I get a size that I want to work with. Again, putting it down on the flat side. Now I can use my claw method because I've got this piece small enough and under control that I can use my claw. And what I'm going to do is take a couple of cuts here because I'm going to work toward the brunoise, which is this real tiny dice that we have right here. So we've got to make several cuts in order to get to the brunoise. Now, I want to get nice clean edges, so I'm going to get rid of some of the items that I don't need. Again, I'm just using my claw method here. I'm not going to have any of this skin. I've got beautiful uh, pieces right here that I'm going to be able to cut into my brunoise. Depending on how big you want, I'm going to make a couple of slices down here. Now I've got all these long match sticks. This is very similar to a julienne. It's a little bit fatter. They're very square. You see? That? Okay. So I want to get these all stacked up, and I use my knife as kind of a clean edge to push them all up against so I get a nice cut. I'm going to use my claw method again. I'm going to hold this down, and I'm going to look, and I want to measure so that I just get that little bit of a quarter of an inch. Also notice that my knife pushes down on the cutting board up here in the front. I don't bring the whole knife down. I'm only using the very uh, front tip as a pivot point. I'm going to watch your fingers and keep them out of the way. And look what I've got. Look at this little tiny brunoise. All right, so I'm ready to slice a tomato. Everybody slices tomatoes. So I'm going to show you how to get it done where it's nice and easy and straight. Here's my tomato, and I'm going to take this first slice right off the top. Now, look, I immediately put my hand right into the cloth because I know that I'm going to have to take good control over this round product so that I don't cut myself. So I've got my claw going, and the first slice is going to be right against my knuckle, and I'm going to push down. There you go, and get that first slice off. It's not a particularly ripe tomato, but this is about cutting techniques. 
All right, so the next one I'm going to do um, the same way, and I'm going to keep pushing with my thumb. You'll see me kind of pushing with my thumb. You'll see me coming back on it. That's going to keep that counter pressure going on that tomato. So coming down with my point and back, feeling it with my knuckle and back. And I'm using my, uh, if you can see my index finger, I'm just knocking it off. Because uh, if you don't, they end up falling all over the place, and you don't want that. All right, keep using my, my uh, knuckle as a guide, and I keep pulling back with my thumb. You do that, and you're just going to have actually beautiful slices every time. A little bit of knife skill there. Okay, so we're going to get into a diced onion. Uh, I've seen so many onions hacked, it's not even funny. Uh, there really is a, an easy way to do it. It's not just classically French. Uh, it's also just really easy and a quick way to get a lot of diced onions. I keep diced onions in my fridge all the time. All right, so we first we pick up our French knife. We want to make sure that we're holding it properly. There's a couple different ways. You can have your fingers just all underneath here. Your thumb is on the other side. You don't want any fingers on here. This would be incorrect. You see that a lot. Get that finger down. Uh, or you can have your hands a little bit further up on the blade. That's how I like to hold my knife. I just feel like I have a little more control that way. We're all personal about our knives. All right, so I'm holding my knife. I'm going to cut just the tip of the root off of my onion and the tip of the growing top part. And these are going to be discarded. So I've taken both ends off, but I've made sure that I left it quite a bit on the root end. I want it to hold together while I'm uh, making turning this into a dice. So let me get this peeled off here. Again, working right over my trash bowl. Notice I didn't have to go find a trash can. I'm right here. On my root end, I'm going to have that away from me, and I'm going to center my knife up, and I'm going to use my tunnel method to get one long cut through here. Okay, notice I cut right through my root end. That's what I want to do. That's going to hold these two pieces together. I now have two halves that I can work with. Now, this half, I'm going to work with my root end being the end that's going to hold everything together, and I'm going to cut from this side so that it holds it all together. You want to follow the shape of the onion. So I'm going to follow the shape of my onion, and I'm going to see the shape of my knife matches the shape or the plane of my onion. And I'm going to slice all the way in, but not to where I'm going to actually cut, cut through the root. I don't want to cut through the root. And I'm going to make these cuts just about a half inch apart. And again, I'm keeping my fingers out of the way here. But it's still all holding together. Okay, but I've got a lot of striations, a lot of cuts through here. Now I'm going to come with my knife, even or flat like my cutting board here, and I'm going to press down, and I'm going to bring this in almost all the way to the root. One more time, almost all the way to the root. All right, see how this is totally staying together, but it's going to fall apart in a million pieces in just a second. Ready? It looks like magic. Claw method, here we go. How easy is that? That's a properly diced onion. I'm ready to show you um, chiffonade. And so I'm taking this beautiful basil. This is pretty common. You could do it with uh, any kind of uh, herb that you're working with, lettuces that you're working with, bib lettuce, spinach, anything that's leafy like this, and get a beautiful, long, uh, skinny, what's called a chiffonade. All right, I just stack them up, one on top of the other. I'm going to roll them like a little cigar. Not that I know anything about rolling cigars. All right, now I'm going to take my chef's knife, and I'm really, I'm just going to pivot right on the end of it. Watch what I do with my knife. I'm just going to bring it down like that. Okay, nice and skinny. As I get closer to my fingers, I go into my claw method. And you see what I come up with. Are these beautiful little skinny pieces that are gorgeous for garnish, and you see them... Uh, uh, finishing dishes as part of salads, which is absolutely beautiful. This is chiffonade. So the next knife that I'm going to use is going to be my paring knife. Holding my fingers uh, on the handle and then bringing the blade to my thumb. This is how you use a paring knife. I'm actually going to pare off the, uh, the peel. We're going to work with an apple, and I'm going to show you how I'm going to peel this apple using my paring knife. Dig in, get a bit of skin. And then do you see where my thumb is? My thumb is pulling the knife toward my thumb, but I have complete control over this. It's not like I'm going to cut my thumb off. A lot of people are uncomfortable with this. So you get to practice. And I'm just going to bring this down 
to the bottom. So we just finished up with our knife skills. We learned how to use our French knife and also our paring knife. We have a rough chop over here of mirepoix. We cre created a julienne of the celery, also brunoise carrots. We used a couple different methods over here with our knife. We used the tunnel method to keep hold of anything round, and we also used the claw method for slicing. And then we finished off with a little chiffonade over here. So you're ready. You've got a few basic knife skills under your belt. For next episode, we're going to need it because we're doing some cooking, some real cooking. So for homework, go out and get a couple of these things. Try some of these different cuts. See if you can get comfortable with them. And thanks for joining us. I'm Chef Carrie Leonard on Culinary Classroom. You can buy your next gas grill from a big box store, but you're not going to get much grill. So why not buy your next natural gas grill from PSNC Energy? We'll help you choose a premium grill that fits you. And we'll even deliver and set it up. So when you're ready for a big boy grill, don't go to the box. Buy your next gas grill from PSNC Energy, your natural gas professional.